Good morning and welcome to our Ministry Area online service. Since the lockdown started, our Ministry Area team have worked together to produce a service each week so that people in our churches and beyond can worship together. Thank you very much for your wonderful feedback that you have given for the last 11 services we have. We have now featured each and every church building in our ministry area. We have 10 buildings and last week the service was broadcasted from the Church of St. Asui in Patricia. From this week onward, each week you will be listening about a ministry in our ministry area. And this week, Marvin Large is talking about children and family work. It's just been announced that schools in Wales will be returning by the end of this month. So it's just as well that I ordered the Leavers books for the Year 6 children from Krakauer Primary School, which have just arrived in the post. For the last five years, I've been part of the Open Book team, which regularly leads Bible-based assemblies there. So I've become quite a familiar face to the children. As I've been furloughed from my children and families work and cannot meet face to face with people at the moment, they're going to have to be posted. But I'm glad that there will be an opportunity to deliver these books to them. They include advice on how to prepare for secondary school, what to do if you're struggling with, children, with school life, as well as a Bible story and a prayer. It's a way of expressing God's love and care for them as they take this big step in their lives. It can be traumatic enough under normal circumstances, let alone when their year six experience has been so badly disrupted. It's very doubtful too whether we'll be able to make any sort of provision for the usual holiday club in the first week of the school holidays. Preparing for that usually takes up a lot of the team's time and energy in this summer term. There are also some books here for all sorts and for those children who are leaving to start in primary school in September. Quite a few of these are children who I have met through our toddler group, Messy Monday, or children who've been baptised in St Ed's, and it's lovely to keep in touch with them as they grow up and move on too. When my own children were small, getting out of the house to toddler groups or for meetups with other mums was key part of staying sane. This is why ministry to mums and toddlers is so close to my heart and why so many churches offer this outreach. During lockdown, I've been keeping in touch with the families using Zoom and social media. A Zoom toddler group was quite challenging and doing the okie cokey really didn't work. So we moved it to a mum's night in, a chance for the mums to talk after the children had gone to bed. Messy Church has been challenging this year. I love working with the creative team to come up with craft ideas and different ways of presenting the Bible stories. And I love it when some of the older members of the congregation make this their main service on the second Sunday of the month. Contrary to popular belief, Messy Church is not just for the little ones. On March the 8th, we celebrated Fair Trade Fortnight, but then everything ground to a halt. I hope you've had a chance to watch the messy church which we filmed for the Good Friday service. The team has met via Zoom for prayers and I've offered support to our families and sent them ideas for messy church at home. We hope and pray that they will keep safe. Messy church vintage had just been launched in Mysafanon and this fresh expression of church will continue to grow and thrive I'm sure. So you'll see that my work has very little to do with what goes on in St Ed's on a Sunday morning. It's about taking the church out to the community, being the public face of God and his hands and feet in Krakow. Not being able to meet with the school children or the toddlers or the cubs or the messy church team or baptism families is a real sadness. But we trust that God is in control through all of this and we look to him for his love and protection and prepare to meet up on the other side as we can all meet together for our usual activities. Something to really look forward to.
Hello, and welcome to our morning worship, this time featuring St. Kenai's Church, Thlangeni. Today is Trinity Sunday when we celebrate the Christian doctrine of the three aspects of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our preacher is Father Chris Bowler, priest in charge of the parish of the Vale of Griney. Malcolm Thomas and Russell Walker will read the lessons and Brian Jones will lead into sessions for us. There'll be two hymns, played by Vaughan Bennett and sung by his wife Kay, and let's all join in with these when they come up, together in spirit, if not under the same physical roof. But first, shall we all take a moment or two to settle our minds before an opening prayer? O God, who has given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to show your praise, help us to worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with understanding, with reverence, and with joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, and is, and is to come. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. Our first hymn this morning is Thou Whose Almighty Word. Today's psalm is number eight, and we will say it together. O Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. 
What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God, and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. And now we think of errors we've made, where we have let ourselves down, or maybe have hurt or failed others. In the poet's words, we can sense the shame of motives late revealed, and the awareness of things ill done, and done to others harm, which once you took for exercise of virtue. We look for God's forgiveness, as we say together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Forgive others, forgive yourselves. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. We're now going to share the peace. When we visit other churches in normal times, we see congregations have their different ways of doing this. In our present situation, it's obviously hard to reproduce those experiences, but we still have opportunities to make the moment meaningful. And in the spirit of pilgrimage and mission beyond even the virtual walls of this and other churches in our ministry area, shall we spend a few moments thinking of people anywhere with whom we really need to reconnect, maybe to heal awkward estrangements, and where we could well be the ones who have to make the first move. Now may even have become the ideal time to do this. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Next, we're going to hear from the Bible, first from the Old Testament read by Malcolm Thomas, and then today's Gospel selection will be read by Russell Walker. A reading from Isaiah. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the heavens with a span? enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. 
who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counsellor has instructed him. Who did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust of the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or, or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The powerful reading we heard from Isaiah states clearly God's mighty creative power. His provision to nourish and nurture creation. And amazingly, his caring personal presence with us. Yet God is so much more. We can't see it because of our limited human understanding. Given this, I wonder what our personal concepts of God are. Do we limit him and what he can do to change our lives? The Gospel reading shows this balance of divine power and authority and the personal individual loving relationship on offer. Jesus, in his last words on earth, is bringing God's plan into the realm of our understanding. He speaks to the disciples on the mountain, often a place 
where he brings us to encounter the human and divine. And the mountain is often the place where we experience a humbling reality. Jesus proclaims his God-given authority over heaven and earth. And it is in this authority that Jesus tells his disciples to go, baptise, preach and teach. To make more disciples using that very same authority invested in them. This great commission is as much for us as for them. It is handing on an inherited task. And Jesus also highlights the importance of baptism, which unites us as believers with Jesus and is our key to salvation and everlasting life. And Jesus is subtly showing us the reality of that great mystery, the Holy Trinity. We are instructed to baptise in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. He doesn't say names. The three in one of the Trinity is clear and affirmed. And the person of the Holy Spirit is critical in us believing Jesus' promise in the speech that he will always be with us, that this is true. And he is with us through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will be his presence that never leaves us. Our continuing relationship with God that transcends time and place. I think most of us have gathered that evangelism is for some of us a difficult thing. We don't always find it easy to speak openly and publicly. But we have all been given a gift of evangelism, just in different forms, which is a good thing as we are all called to obey Jesus' instructions. Now, instructions can seem easy to follow, but actually difficult to carry out. It depends on understanding and skills. I'm pretty good at holding the tools, while Wendy fathoms it all out from the manual. But we do this in the authority of the Trinity. Whether we evangelise by standing on street corners, or at public events. More probably, for most of us, it's a slow building of trusting relationships over time, where people see something in us that will draw them to God. The key in all of it is relationship. When thinking of the Trinity, I like to meditate on a wonderful religious icon by Andrei Rublev. It depicts the three angels visiting Abraham at Mamre. It's often interpreted as representing the Trinity, three persons in one. The table is laid. The central figure shows two fingers, a blessing, also a beckoning perhaps, inviting us, the viewer, into complete a circle with our presence, to take our place at the table with the Trinity. Our relationship with God through Jesus is that close. Can you see someone you love but no longer see in that space of invitation? Our task is to bring someone or many into this loving relationship, an ever-widening circle of disciples, letting go of our limitations to share this love without limits. Let us now join and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And Brian Jones will now lead us in the intercessions. Peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. This road we travel together is sometimes hard. This is one of those times. This lockdown tests us all. We miss companionship, the touch of another's hand, a smile not filtered through a screen. You can be lonely in a crowded room. How much more lonely then when the screen is switched off and the silence closes in. Not all of us suffer this. We are fortunate to have a family or at least a spouse to throw back the gloom. But we must pray for those less fortunate than us. Let them know that even when the screen fades to grey, we are still there and our spirit through our faith enfolds them. Though we are not there, our hands still hold their hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The road ahead is still clouded over. The fog of uncertainty gives the most stout of heart pause, and we wonder what the future may bring. However, we, in the goodly company, of the servants of the Church of Jesus Christ know that with the help and guidance of Chris our Vicar and John our Archbishop and all the other rectors in this diocese and others that we will make it through these troubled times and come once again to kneel at the altar of our Saviour and receive the sacrament that nourishes our soul like no other food could. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Though we cannot, except in limited circumstances, make any type of physical contact at the moment with others except our immediate family, simply walking around our local community if we can, can serve to lighten, if only for a moment, the pressure we all feel. It is at these times that the friendly smile, the nod of acknowledgement, the wave of a hand and of course the passing of five minutes to gossip can serve to reaffirm the local bonds. We affirm that we are travelling this road together. We are not alone. We are a community and we will come through this together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We hear again of terrible events around the world. And we cannot help but wonder, where is God? This question can trouble even the most steadfast of hearts. 
It is at these times when our faith is truly tested and when the need for prayer on behalf of others is at its greatest. The suffering of others is surely one of the most difficult things to bear in life. We can never get used to it. Let us hope we can never get used to it. We pray for all those carers, nurses and doctors who have to face this every day. May our prayers help to dry the tears of angels and lift their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All-powerful God, send your angels to calm the fast-beating hearts, cool heat of anger and soothe the troubled minds. Let the world know that hate and violence never solved anything but love and soft voices and a determination to set aright that which is wrong did. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Dear Lord, accept these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we say the Collect for Trinity Sunday together? Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Angel Voices Ever Singing.
we pray for safety. May the sky be our protecting veil, the sun a kindly light, the hills be our friend, the rains touch us lightly, and the Holy Spirit be our guide and our strength. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen.